Here's a guy who thinks he has a question atheists can't answer. Now, believe it or not, atheism is actually the easiest worldview in the world to refute. And it's because of this one question. Okay, well, first of all, which variety of atheism are you talking about? Because some definitions of atheism say it is a worldview which makes claims which might be refutable, but another definition of atheism is that it is simply the doxastic state of not being convinced by theism. Simply failing to be convinced of something is not a claim, and therefore it makes no sense to say that it can be refuted. Hey, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. The Army is a Bible game that can be used to teach apologetics effectively in the home to all ages. Wow, that sounds like a rip-roaring good time. I'm sure Rod and Todd Flanders will love it. Now the context of this question is that Jesus has just entered Jerusalem upon a donkey, revealing himself as the Messiah, fulfilling the prophecy in Daniel chapter 9. He then proceeds to go to the temple and clear it out of the money changes. This is the second time he's done this. It's at this point that the Pharisees approach him and ask him this question. By whose authority do you do these things? My friends, that is the question that only God can answer. And this is where atheism gets in a pickle. And it goes something like this. An atheist comes up to you and says, give me proof that God exists. All you have to do is say, by whose authority are you gonna determine the validity of the truth claims that I present to you. Oh, this is a presuppositionalist video. It's very appropriate then that this picture is in the background because that power bar plugged into itself is the perfect illustration of presuppositionalism. Presuppositionalists argue that knowledge of truth can only come from a god because to be absolutely certain of anything you have to be infallible and all-knowing. And how do we know that this god is in fact infallible and all-knowing? Well, because he says so, and we should believe him because he's infallible and all-knowing, of course. See how it works? Yeah. Or by whose authority are you demanding that I give you evidence that God exists? I'm not demanding evidence that a God exists. What I tell apologists and proselytizers is that if they want me to believe that there is a God, they are going to have to give me a definition that I can understand and then evidence that a God fitting that definition exists. I'm not making any of my own claims about a god. I'm not even saying a god does not exist. I'm only saying that I'm not convinced that a god exists. Since I'm not trying to prove anything, I can't carry a burden of proof. Now you also asked by what authority I judge the evidence. How do I infer that the evidence shows that the statement God exists is or is not true? Well, I don't make any absolutely indubitable judgment about that because I don't make any such judgment about the existence of anything. I'm pretty firmly convinced that giraffes exist, for example, and it would take a lot to convince me otherwise, but it would still be possible to convince me that every giraffe I've ever seen has been a hallucination. What I'm getting at is that since the beliefs I have are not absolutely unwaveringly indubitable, I don't need to be convinced by an absolute infallible source of knowledge. Preceptors seem to think that if you don't have an infallible basis for your beliefs, you cannot justify any claims whatsoever. They also seem to think that every claim is a claim to infallible certainty, which requires a god to exist, and that it is therefore hypocritical to make any atheist claims at all. But every claim I have ever made is a belief claim, not a knowledge claim or a truth claim, including this one. Since, as best I can tell, I don't make knowledge or truth claims, I don't see the need for an infallible source of knowledge or truth. The Bible is riddled with contradictions. By whose authority are you determining what is a contradiction? I determine that two assertions are contradictory if I cannot understand what it would mean for them to both be true at the same time and in the same respect. I may be mistaken in my assessment, but until you can show me where my judgment went wrong, I'm incapable of believing such assertions to both be true. And by whose authority are you placing an obligation on me to live my life in such a way that I don't embrace contradiction? I don't give a f how you live your life. Just don't ask me to embrace contradictions. The God of the Bible is a tyrant. How can you believe in such an evil being? By whose authority are you claiming that the God of the Bible is immoral or a tyrant? I don't think I've ever heard anyone ask, how can you believe in such an evil being? How evil a being is has nothing to do with how credible claims about its existence are. Also, by the biblical God's own standards, he is evil. In Isaiah 45, 7, Yahweh openly admits that he creates evil. The atheist becomes the one who determines ultimate truth what is logical, and what is moral. They make themselves God. I don't determine ultimate truth because I'm not completely certain any of my beliefs achieve ultimate truth. And you don't need to be a God to determine morality or logic because those are human inventions with human-made rules. The problem with this is that you can do the exact same. You say, well, I disagree with you. Now who's right? So what? I don't care whether you disagree with me. Unlike proselytizers, I'm not trying to convert anyone. All I'm asking is that you not try to convert me. 
You see, God is the ultimate source and standard of truth, knowledge, wisdom, goodness, justice. So the question is, by whose authority do you do this? If it isn't God, then it doesn't matter. By whose authority do you judge that God, especially the specific God of the Bible, is such an ultimate authority? If your answer is that God is the ultimate authority on God's authority, then that's circular. And regardless of whether your God is an ultimate authority, you still have to rely on your fallible human reasoning to make the conclusion that he is an ultimate authority. Since that's the case, your epistemic footing is just as slippery as mine is. Now Jesus said in Luke 16 verse 31, if they don't believe Moses and the prophets, the word of God, neither will they be persuaded if one rises from the dead. Persuaded of what? That a God exists? Of course not, because there's no logical connection between the two. To infer that a God exists because someone rose from the dead, even if that person claimed to be a prophet of a God or a God himself, is a non sequitur. You can answer objections with the Bible, and if people reject that, well, they're rejecting the word of God. They're rejecting the ultimate standard of truth, the ultimate source of truth. How do you know that the Bible is the word of God? Because it says so? Any book can do that. Even if the presuppositionalist argument worked and demonstrated that there must be a God, that in no way demonstrates that the Bible is the word of any God. So at that point, let them. Okay, good luck with that. Paul the Apostle in Romans 1 verses 18 to 21 states that Everyone already knows that God exists. So the job of the Christian isn't to prove God's existence to people. The job of the Christian is to preach the word of God in hopes that the Holy Spirit will draw people into his kingdom. Then what is even the point of refuting atheism? To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.